watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about the breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Terrorists launched a grenade attack in Kashmir with Indian CRPF on target. Blast in Balochistan's capital Quetta kills two, leaves many injured. Experts in Saath 2020 urge Pakistan to stop using terrorists as instruments of foreign and domestic policy. An Islamic State terror module busted in Delhi, three arrested. Pakistan-sponsored terrorists have run amok ever since the Indian administration abrogated Article 370, enabling the Indian state to receive direct benefits from the centre. They have intensified their efforts at inciting violence and creating havoc in the otherwise peaceful Kashmir. Recently, terrorists lobbed grenades on the CRPF troops in two separate attacks on the busy streets of Kashmir. However, both the grenades missed the target and exploded nearby, causing injuries to at least three civilians, a report. Pakistan-backed terrorists are leaving no stone unturned in their attempts to create tension and incite violence in the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Continuing with their malicious agenda, terrorists recently launched a grenade attack on the Central Reserve Police Force personnel deployed in Habak Chok area of Srinagar that injured two civilians. However, there was no injury to any CRPF personnel as the grenade missed the intended target and exploded on the roadside that triggered panic among locals. Following the attack on CRPF personnel, security forces immediately cordoned off the area to nab the terrorists involved in the attack. In another vicious attempt to create civil unrest, terrorists hurled a grenade on CRPF personnel earlier this month in Kwadwara area of Jammu and Kashmir, causing splinter injuries to a 16-year-old boy. Two vehicles were also damaged in the attack that was carried out in the middle of the road and created an environment of fear among people, with shopkeepers shutting their shops. Scrapping of the temporary special status of Jammu and Kashmir has badly rattled Pakistan that it is desperately trying to create an atmosphere of fear and terror among people that would hinder the economy and progress in Kashmir. So, बाहर देखिए ये फौजी जो हमारे कंसर्न यहां है वो भी जमा हो गए थे बाहर किसी ने बोला ना ग्रेनेड का ये ग्रेनेड का दबागा है अभी पता चला कि बोलते हैं यहां लोकली कोई दो बच्चे हैं वो जख्मी हो गए Meanwhile the Indian security forces in the valley continue to fight back the Pakistan backed terrorist who try to create havoc in Jammu and Kashmir During the ongoing investigations of previous attacks the security forces arrested lashkar e taiba militant Nisar Ahmad Dar, who was injured in an encounter on November 12, 2019. Dar, who was associated with LET commander Salim Pare, has been active since 2018 and was a part of terror group operating in a village of Gandharbal district. lashkar e taiba is a Pakistan-based terror outfit which is responsible for a series of terror attacks in India. Jammu Kashmir police ko or any security forces ko ek itla mili thi ke jisme ek jo militant hai jiska naam Nisar Dar hai, wo ek jaga par chupa hua hai. So accordingly, police or security forces ne us area ko searches kara aur usme usko apprehend kiya gaya hai. आह ये निशारे में डार जो है ये एलईटी और बांडी एलईटी से वापसता है और ये बांडीपुरा जिले का सुकुनत डार था। Terrorists from Pakistan are strategically targeting Indian CRPF members just few days ahead of one year anniversary of Pulwama attack, suggesting a possible relaunch of Pulwama-like attack in upcoming days. 
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan had last year suggested a possible repeat of Pulwama-like attack in Pakistan's parliament and the fresh attacks on Indian CRPF suggest that his words have actually boosted the morale of anti-India elements. Pulwama type incident hoga. Pulwama type incident hoga. Main aaj patient koi karta hoon. The previous year saw a terror attack when a vehicle filled with explosives rammed into a convoy of Indian security personnel on the Jammu Srinagar National Highway in Pulwama district, which killed 40 personnel of the Central Reserve Police Force as a critical juncture. Earlier in January 2016, a group of Pakistan-backed terrorists attacked the Pathankot Air Force Station, part of the Western Air Command of the Indian Air Force. In the same year, the Indian Army suffered its one of the biggest loss when four heavily armed terrorists crossed the line of control and launched a massive grenade attack on a military camp in the Uri town on 18th September 2016. Law and order in Balochistan's capital Quetta remains volatile as the region is consistently suffering from repeated terror attacks. Recently, a motorcycle bomb blast rocked Balochistan's capital Quetta, killing two people and leaving a dozen of civilians injured. At least two people were killed and several others got wounded after a bomb targeted a security personnel vehicle in the southwestern Pakistani city of Quetta this week. The attack took place at an intersection near the city's busy Liaquat market just seven days following the beginning of New Year 2020. The explosives were packed on a motorcycle, although it was unclear if the attack involved a suicide attacker or if the bomb was planted to go off via remote control or a timer. Despite Islamabad's heavy claims of maintaining peace in the region, Balochistan remains a hub of unrest and violence in the country. What they are doing in Balochistan, thousands of pieces of people are missing. What they do, they are burning our villages, they are uh, killing our people, they are killing his students. There is nothing left. We want this army to get out. Enough is enough. For more than a decade, Pakistani security forces have been unleashing repressive and bloody inhuman operations over Baloch civilians who are seeking independence for the ethnic Baloch areas of the province. Baloch nationalists are frequently targeted by Pakistani security forces across the province. They have been struggling for an independent state since 1948 and are consistently muzzled or shot down at their slightest protest against the administration. The recurring terror attacks in the mineral-rich province exposed Pakistan military and its notorious inter-service intelligence agency's deadly plans for the region. Baluchistan was a free state and they sent the army to occupy Baluchistan. Since that day, the atrocities are going on. They want to suppress us. They want to loot and plunder our wealth. Our intellectuals are killed. Our students are abducted, and uh, what they're doing over there, systematically, they want to uh, make a fear in the heart of Baluch people that uh, we're going to give up. Quetta is the capital of Balochistan province, Pakistan's largest but most sparsely populated province. It is rich in mineral resources and the root of much of the $60 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project goes through this region. Issues like terrorism, religious fanatism, sectarian violence, corruption and the threat of nuclear proliferation overwhelm the suffering of the Baloch. While Pakistan and China make huge profits in Balochistan, 
the local people suffer extreme hardship. Despite its mineral wealth, Balochistan is the poorest region of Pakistan. A three-day conference of South Asians against terrorism and for human rights was held in Washington, D.C. this week. Former Pakistani diplomats and human rights activists slammed Pakistan in the conference for using extremism and propagating terrorism in the South Asian region, a report. A two-day-long SARS 2020 event was organized in Washington, D.C by South Asian against terrorism and for human rights. The event saw the participation of former Pakistani diplomats, journalists and human rights activists who called out Pakistan for its use of extremism to torture its citizens and propagate terrorism in the South Asian region. Former ambassador of Pakistan to the U.S., Hussein Haqqani spoke about rise of new and improvised repressive regime in South Asia because of Pakistan. He called South Forum an alternative platform of influencers to address issues of Pakistan. طرح سے جمہوریت کے دفاع آئین کی پاسداری اور پاکستان میں بسنے والی مختلف قومیتوں کے حقوق کے تحفظ کو ملک دشمنی قرار دیا جاتا ہے ساتھ ایک ایسا فورم ہے کہ جو پاکستان کے ان جمہوریت پسند ایکٹیوسٹس کا فورم ہے جو پوری دنیا میں بکھرے ہوئے ہیں اور وہ ان اصولوں کے لیے کھڑے ہوتے ہیں اسی لیے بعض لوگ ساتھ کو ملک دشمن کہتے ہیں حالانکہ حقیقت میں ساتھ آئین دشمنی کا دشمن ہے ملک کا نہیں The group of dissident Pakistanis expressed deep disappointment over continuous military intervention and abridgment of democratic freedoms in Pakistan. They called on mainstream parties to stand up for civilian supremacy, constitutional governance and rule of law in the country. One of the speakers at the forum affirmed that the people of Pakistan would no longer surrender under the anti-civilian laws and would reclaim their country from the uniformed handlers of terror groups. The people of Pakistan will not surrender, I'm confident. I've seen martial laws, I've struggled against martial laws, General Ziaulak's martial law, General Musharraf's martial law, but I, I believe people of Pakistan are the real owners of the country. They will reclaim their country. They will, they will reclaim the civilian, civilian space Recognizing that peace in Pakistan is inextricably linked with peace in Afghanistan, the dissident Pakistani members at the South session asserted that Pakistani diaspora has an important role in speaking about issues that matter to Pakistanis back home. South 2020 condemned the brutality of the military against the residents of erstwhile Fatah after attacks on the military checkposts by the terrorists. The dissident Pakistani members participated in the fourth edition of the South Conference at Washington and also passed a resolution calling for an end to military oppression in Balochistan. Earlier, South conferences were held in London in 2016 and 2017 and in Washington, D.C. in 2018. There is a growing sense of confusion and anxiety among the Afghan civilians as they continue to struggle between the cycle of horrendous terror attacks and a non-assuring process of peace talks. Bulk province of Afghanistan once again came at the targets of Taliban insurgents this week as the region was attacked by an explosion that killed one resident. While there seems to be no stop to the series of terror attacks, the probability of a ceasefire is grim as there has been no significant development in the peace process. An explosion during the morning rush hour in the northern Afghan province of Balk killed a local resident and wounded at least two others this week. 
The incident comes a day after the Afghan Interior Ministry reported that 2,219 civilians were killed and 5,172 were wounded by Taliban militants during 2019. Terror attacks and the process of peace talks are running in Palras in Afghanistan. While a positive development towards striking peace brings delight to the Afghan civilians, a terror attack in the very next moment shatters all their hopes into pieces. As far as the Afghan civilians are concerned, they've been used to it. They've been seeing it for the last almost one decade that there are efforts on to try and bring in some sort of a negotiated peace. At the last moment, the peace breaks down because of a terror attack. Even now, when talks were taking place in Qatar and Americans were almost in the verge of signing a peace agreement, an American contractor was killed and the President Trump walked out, uh, ensured that the Americans walk out of that peace talks. Once again, peace talks are taking place, but nobody knows what will be the end game or what would be the end result. In August last year, multiple reports suggested that the Taliban and the US were close to an initial deal, one that would not only reduce violence, but also starts the process of withdrawal of foreign troops from Afghanistan. Officials and analysts who were in the know and had been closely observing the development could hardly contain their excitement. That was until September 5th, when the Taliban launched a complex attack on a foreign compound in Kabul, killing 12 people, including a US soldier. Soon after, US President Donald Trump announced the cancellation of the talks and called off a secret meeting at Camp David with the Taliban and the Afghan leadership. This effectively brought to halt year-long efforts by Mr. Khalil Saad, amounting to little in terms ending the conflict or even the mere reduction of violence. Taliban are spelling a great opportunity. President Trump wants to win the election and he had promised people that before the next election he will pull the American troops out. They want to bring in an aspect of fatigue. They, want, they see opportunity on their side and they repetitively trying to ensure that they get the maximum payoffs from a peace agreement that comes into play. Essentially, though I said the Taliban controls very little portion of the territory, Americans want that it should be a peace agreement owned by Afghanistan, Afghan government led by Afghanistan and principally, principal part being that of the Afghans. Taliban on the other hand wants complete control over the entire country. They don't want to be part of a government which includes the government forces as well as the, uh, the Taliban. They want to exclude, exclusively take control of entire Afghanistan, which Americans are not willing to accept. The Taliban have continued to mount large-scale attacks on US interests in the country. In December, they targeted a medical center near Bagram Airfield, a US air base north of Kabul, injuring more than 100 civilians and at least five foreign troops in an attack that lasted for hours. However, while this attack did not prompt the US to call off the renewed talks, it did raise questions over whether the Taliban are as coercive a force as they present themselves to be. Pakistan wants to ensure that the government which comes into being there, whether it is the Afghan government or the Taliban government, is subservient to the Pakistani government, takes orders from the Pakistani army and the Pakistani ISI and remains friendly to them. Second thing, Pakistan wants to create Afghanistan as a defense in depth because Pakistan doesn't have much of depth and uh, in other words they want Afghanistan to become a client state which once again is not going to be possible because there is in addition to Pakistan there are lot many other people who are very much interested in the outcome. <coughs> India has got very strong economic interests, Russia has got similar interests, Central Asian countries have got similar interests, Iran has got long contiguous borders with Afghanistan, they have some similar interests. Under these circumstances it is going to be very very difficult for some sort of a peace to really speaking emerge in the next couple of years. While it was easy to go to war, the end game that is going to finish this war continues to be in a state of confusion. Nobody knows which way the eventually the end game will come about. While the Taliban might portray themselves as a strong and unified force, there are elements within the organization who could prove spoilers even if a deal is stuck with the US. 
these rock factions not only threaten long term peace but also increase the risk of civilian casualties with the body count already on a steady rise An Islamic state terror module got busted this week by India's Delhi police as they arrested three men who were planning to carry out a major terror strike in New Delhi and Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Incriminating materials recovered from three accused of the module revealed the group's despicable plot against India. A report. Receiving a shot in the arm, Delhi police recently busted a major ISIS terror module and apprehended three men from the national capital. The trio was reportedly allegiant to the Islamic State, more appropriately, the Islamic State of Khorasan, an ISIS offshoot operating from Pakistani geography. According to the officials, they were planning to carry out attacks in the national capital region and Uttar Pradesh. The arrest took place early in the morning after an exchange of fire between police and the three accused who were identified as Khwaja Moinuddin, Sayyid Ali Nawaz and Abdul Samad. Three people have been special cell team. Khwaja Moinuddin, Sayyid Nawaz and Abdul Samad. They have been in Wazirabad in a brief exchange of fire. They have been three pistols with them. They have been in Nepal. They have been in Nepal. They have been in Nepal. अपॉर्चुनिटी की तलाश कर रहे थे इंस्ट्रक्शंस इनको मिलने वाले थे कि ये एनसीआर में या यूपी में कहीं कोई टेररिस्ट स्ट्राइक कैरी आउट करने का इनका प्लान है। अकॉर्डिंग टू द पुलिस एन इनपुट वाज रिसीव्ड अबाउट थ्री हाईली रैडिकलाइज्ड मेन इंस्पायर्ड बाय आईएसआईएस बीइंग हिडन इन वजीराबाद were residing in Delhi with arms and ammunition provided by their foreign-based handlers sitting in Pakistan to carry out a major terror attack in the national capital region. These people were in Nepal. After Nepal, they came to Delhi. And they were making a plan for NCR or UP in a terror strike in NCR, which they had to get instructions from foreign-based handlers. शुरुआती जांच से अभी ये पता चला है कि ये आईएसआईएस इंस्पायर्ड मॉड्यूल है। दिल्ली पुलिस फर्दर इनफॉर्म्ड दैट दिस अक्यूज्ड वर आल्सो इन्वॉल्व्ड इन अदर मॉड्यूल्स ऑफ आईएसआईएस एंड वर इन टच विद फॉरेन हैंडलर्स थ्रू सोशल मीडिया एप्लिकेशंस। टेररिज्म इज अ ह्यूज इश्यू ऑफ कंसर्न एस ऑल द टेररिस्ट � India as an easy target. The financial and military assistance extended by Pakistan to these terror outfits, which is badly rattled by India's booming economy and its status as a rising power, further contributes to their easy way out in launching terror attacks in the country. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Watching Tag TV.